Um, hello, my name is Jessica Taylor. It is April 21st, 2023, and I am here with the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. This interview is a part of the Tidewater Main Street Project. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with today? James Johnson. Great. And uh, when and where were you born? I was born March 22nd, 1940 in Westbourne, Virginia. Wonderful. And what were your parents' names and occupations? My uh, father was James Robert Johnson. Uh, he was a laborer. And my mother was Florence Billups Johnson. Okay, she's a housewife. She did work uh, some in later years in uh, restaurants or whatever, cooking or either making salads. Great. And um, did you grow up in West Point? Yes. Okay, what part of West Point did you live in? I, I, I grew up in and around uh, between uh, 15th Street. I lived on 16th Street, uh, but um, most of my friends were either you know, 15th Street or even down towards the school on 13th Street. Uh, and did you attend St. Clair Walker? Yes, I did. Okay, what grades? Huh? What grades did you attend? Everything they had there. I started there and finished there. See, the schools, they closed the school in West Point in 54. And uh, some of the students in the, that class were taught first in homes and uh, around uh, in ch uh, the churches. But uh, that, I think, lasted for about a year or something like that. And then some of the students uh, came to St. Clair Walker and some went up to, um, over to Central High School in King and Queen. The school board, the powers to be, uh, wanted us to attend King William up at Hamilton Homes. But uh, we, were, we weren't going to do that. It would provide trans both bus transportation up there. And uh, so some of the, uh, like I said, went to uh, Central and King and Queen, and some came in Middlesex. At that time, uh, Mrs. Dolores Teppens was teaching physical ed over in Middlesex, Eric Sinclair Walker, and uh, Mr. Alan Lomax was coming from King and Queen, going to West Point and coming over. He was a science teacher. Uh, and uh, so students rode with them, the first ones. Uh, I was uh, I wasn't in that, that group. They, it was taught two years, I guess, where I started. Uh, because as I went to what was seventh or eighth grade, I can't remember, in West Point. And uh, then had to go to in high school. Uh, it, decisions to go. I, did, I wasn't going to go where they wanted me to go. Uh, that was my defiant. Um, so I wanted to come to St. Clair Walker. Uh, they had, to me, better academic program and uh, talking to people in and around. Plus, they had a gymnasium. Central didn't have a gymnasium. Central was just like Beverly Allen. He played out on a dirt court. So all the guys in West Point played basketball. Everybody had a hoop in their backyard. So basically we were split up. And eventually half came here. Mr. Allen, my, uh, the first year I came over, uh, Thomas Allen, and King and Queen, his son drove a station wagon, and he brought us over. And uh, 
Then Clarence Jackson, we called him Dickie, uh, he, uh, his father got him a car and he started transporting. So I, that was my first year uh, coming to Middlesex. I, um, excuse me, my first year was with, was with, with Dickie. And then he graduated, I think that was his senior year probably, and uh, started riding with Miss Allen. So it was, that's where we spent the next, what, four or five years at uh, St. Clair Walker. Um, you are referring sometimes to your siblings? No, 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 no. Oh, when I say we, I'm just talking about the kids that were my age, uh, that were uh, of uh, high school age and black kids in West Point. Uh, because they still had the elementary school there, yeah, the buildings that did house the high school, I think was where the sixth and seventh graders probably went. And the rest, uh, first grade was also in that building. And across the street was uh, a wooden building with two rooms, and they uh, had classes there. So, uh, that's about it. The kids, we really it sort of, at first, split up about half and half, um, going up to, over to Central. And then the powers to be decided they would give a bus to go, at first they offered a bus to go to King William, well, nobody rode that. And uh, after they started going to King and Queen, uh, to Central, they gave them a bus to ride. Uh, one of the students actually drove the bus. <laughs> and those winding roads are crazy. And uh, so, St. Clair Walker is where I planted my roots. And, uh, all in all, I thought it was a good experience. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, and we had strong teachers there, good teachers. The only thing about it is they didn't teach me to write. I could conjugate verbs, <laughs> but uh, actually writing, uh, I wasn't taught. Uh, what I should have been taught as far as writing goes. But uh, all in all, it's uh, good participation. We got involved in the vocational agriculture program. We got involved with the uh, student organization, which was called uh, New Farmers of America. I think the white farm, uh, school was the future farmers of America, but they were both programs are built on the same uh, principles. So that was the first student organization that I joined. And uh, I served for president, or as president for that for a while. Uh, we had uh, a federation, it was called MGM, Middlesex Gloss and Matthews. So all of our competitions uh, who were in between those three schools, Thomas Hunter, T.C. Walker at Gloucester, and St. Clair Walker. Uh, we participated in the typical student activities. Uh, I found out later on once I got into teaching, but uh, in parliamentary procedure and how to uh, conduct a meeting and uh, public speaking. Uh, we, any time the farmers had a problem, uh, piece of equipment, whatever, we bring it in, and, uh, that's where we learned to well, we learned uh, our carpentry skills, uh, we learned plumbing skills, uh, and uh, basic electricity. We were exposed to that. And, uh, 
So uh, along with that competition, we also had uh, uh, a basketball league as such between the three schools. And each year we had what was called the MGM tournament and it rotated in between the three schools. And on a Saturday, we'd uh, play that tournament and, uh, of course, you got a trophy or whatever for it. And uh, as far as my activities at St. Clair Walker, it was probably, primarily, uh, in vocational agriculture. Uh, with Mr. Lattimore, he was a uh, teacher, and uh, science club. Mr. Lomax uh, kept us involved in that. Uh, I know Leon Lawson, he's dead now, and one of my best buddies. We used to go with him on Saturdays and compete. We didn't compete the way uh, the science fairs or something. That was more of a knowledge Base thing where you go in that ask you questions and you take a written test and whatever that way. And that way you were able to, that's where you got your ribbons uh, for that. Um, we did learn a little bit of everything. As a matter of fact, I was telling someone the other day that I don't hear of capons anymore, but we actually learned to caponize chickens and uh, there, he, he showed us um, what they did um, to hogs or whatever um, bulls, but we weren't allowed to do that. That was, I guess, too much meat to be trusting to a student. But uh, we they had plenty of chickens for us to do, and the thing over was as long as you went in and uh, castrated him and he got up off the table and walked away. You had an A. If you didn't, <laughs> he didn't get up, <laughs> you had a problem. But uh, it was uh, quite interesting. Mr. Lattimore was also our basketball coach. So, uh, it, uh, we, I don't know, we were very competitive in all areas over here. And at that time, it was Mr. Thurston had his daughters over here. I remember uh, uh, in the class behind me was uh, Jackie Polson was ahead of me, which is Dr. Polson's daughter, and Patricia was behind me. We. Uh, Basketball became my thing. That's what I enjoyed doing. And so uh, consequently, you know, team, once they added the boys from West Point, it, all of a sudden, St. Clair Walker was good. And uh, I remember, I guess that was my s sophomore a freshman year, maybe, at, uh, he, he won the district, and they won the district tournament, and they went to the state tournament, and they made it to the finals, and uh, they came out, they were, came in second. There's a reason behind that. There's a school over in Hopewell, it's called Carter G. Woodson, it's still there, I think. The name is there. It might have changed to elementary school or something. But Carter G. Woodson was all of Hopewell, from what I understand. And it started off as a single day school or a small school. By the time they, just, they were constantly getting larger and larger. And they played like one game singly. The rest of their games, they played AAA and AA schools. 
because they were that big. That, that's what was the size. But again, back to segregation, the black association didn't keep that much tabs on reclassifying the school once the school uh, came into the league. So for three years, we met them at the final of the state tournament. Okay, we could be everybody else in the state in our bracket, but we'd meet them. And they were, back, they were a triple-A school, uh, and we couldn't beat them. They had some of the—I was 6'4", and they had two families over there in Hopewell. They called the Rices and the Prices, okay? And one family, we said, produced fast guards, and the other one produced the forwards and the center. They, they were tall guys. I mean, the last— when I played against, he was like about, I guess, three inches taller than I was. And uh, so I could look to follow out <laughs> each game that we played against them. But that's who we met. Uh, we had to travel all the way up 301 to Ralph Bunch High School, up down around Dow Green in that area. And uh, usually we played that game in the daytime, uh, simply because it was so far. And so uh, we went up there. Uh, we played them early in the season, really. And it was on a Saturday. And when we went out to the center to talk to the officials, Came back and Mr. Latimer, we can't play this game. These guys are drunk. I mean, the alcohol was so strong, slurring the speech. No, 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 no. Mr. Latimer didn't want to make any waves. No, 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 fellas, we, 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 we gonna play. We gonna play, and then we'll just have to protest the game out with him. So we went, we played. I went out and started playing, and by. Halftime, I think most of our team was in foul trouble. Okay, because I mean, you you touch the ball and they just 23, 15, and so, uh, didn't know really what we were going to do. So by halftime, we went in and we asked him, told him we still want to go home. You know, we didn't want to finish the game, but he said, no, we're going to, we and protest to, to the league. So we lost that game. Okay. He filed the protest. The league said we, what we wanted, the players wanted, was to play it at a neutral site with officials that the association picked and sent, not to be local, you know, for either one of us. Well, Mr. Thurston, being a good old principal he was, he agreed to play the game back at Ralph Bunch if any two officials other than the two that we had. Well, I guess you know <laughs> when we went out there that time, it was the same thing. And uh, so that was our only loss during the season. Because, of course, you know, they came to play us, we beat them good. And what that uh, did, it worked in our favor. Because that, uh, like I said, half the guys went to King and Queen, and half went to. Uh, St. Clair Walker, but uh, you said we're wrong with it. Ma'am. Oh. oh, it's okay. He, okay. he leaned forward and the, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, what did I do something wrong? Oh, oh. no, you would just lean forward and the green screen wasn't oh. covering you anymore. Oh. Okay. oh, it's okay. We got it. <laughs> okay. It's good now. <laughs> All right. Um, and. and uh, 
So what that meant, what it meant that Central High School and King and Queen, they are not, ended up being the district champions because with that uh, uh, loss that we had to Ralph Bunch. And uh, we ended up being the runner-ups that year. Well, the state tournament is set up so that it's a continuous tournament. So the to tournament champions play their district champions from one uh, 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 district, and the uh, um, tournament champions played run from the other district. And, and uh, so by what happened that year, Ralph Bunch had an ineligible player, so they had to take they took games from them, but naturally they were going to win the district tournament. So what that did, that pitted Central, which uh, 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 they, they were the district champions, and that put them against Ralph Bunch in the first round of the state tournament. But <laughs> being tournament champions, we didn't meet Ralph Bunch until the final. Central got eliminated in round one, where we probably would have gotten eliminated and went round one had it been another way. And uh, so it worked out in our favor. We ended up second place again, but uh, we made it to the finals. And uh, we, we participated, Mr. Lomax used to, like I said, take us to science fairs. And of course, we had the uh, FFA competition. Um, uh, we had exceptionally good teachers. They really uh, looked out for you. They uh, thought, worked with the students every way that they could. As a matter of fact, the drawings that I did in biology class when I got to college, they were better than what <laughs> they were better than what the professor put on the board. But that was Lomax was good. I mean, we had, like I said, we had darn good teachers, and Miss Frazier also in science. But Lomax was uh, my go-to because I had him in for chemistry and biology, and. Uh, We, I guess you would say, the, the defiant class, I guess you'd call us, a lot of crazy kids, but good kids. For instance, I remember when we went to the senior prom, and we had decorated and done everything, had everything nice, but it was typical. Mr. Thurston was out and no, no cheek to cheek dancing, girls against face, 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 face. And I, I guess everybody had gotten tired of that. And so everybody just sitting around at the tables or whatever, uh, not dancing and whatever. Well, Central had their prom on the same night. So we politely, took our dates and went over to Central, to their prom. Well, Monday morning, all the girls, which were girls from Middlesex, I think all of us were dating girls from Middlesex, yeah. Eddie Harris, Catherine Lincoln, uh, uh, Shirley McGill, uh, Julia, was, uh, was, was my first wife. And they called them to the office and said that someone had called their form at the prom and they couldn't be found. Well, nobody called, but they knew that we went, that we left, and uh, somebody blew the whistle that they had gone to Central. But nobody in the 
either family call. So that was just the tale. They sent the girls home, suspended them. But they didn't just suspend any of us. And all the guys were from West Point, the date. But that was just one of the inequities that, that I saw while I was there. I, otherwise, everything was great until around to what senior year. Everything had been growing fine, I thought. Uh, Leo and I had only thing that we took one class, French, was being taught by Mrs. Cameron, and we decided just we didn't want it. Why we didn't want it? It was second period in the evening, and second period in the evening was a time that the gym was free, no classes <laughs> in there, so we could go in there and shoot basketball in the off season. So that's what we did. Well, well, I guess three weeks before graduation, Ms. Cameron, who Cameron, who was our senior English and literature teacher, and uh, she said that uh, Leo and I were going to graduate. No reason. I never found a reason. But I didn't care what she said. I knew I had enough credits to graduate. It didn't bother me. I had more than enough credits. And. Uh, in the past, she had been the one that would go through the records to find out who the uh, valedictorian, who the salutatorian were. And uh, she went through, she said that J Julia, who was my girlfriend at the time, was the valedictorian, and I was a salutatorian. That too didn't bother me. I mean, it, I just, I was, I enjoyed myself in high school. I worked hard, uh, but you know, not like kids now. Boy, I see them to get to what they do to get a point more on you know the transcript. Uh, it wasn't like that with us. Uh, it was kind of happy-go-lucky. So, but she said that Leo and I were going to graduate. That. And some kind of way, it, it, the faculty, it got them. They were saying, so they had several faculty meetings after school and discussing just that. Because I know uh, one day we were walking by, they met in the old library. And uh, Mr. Lattimore was coming out, and he came out wiping his head, sweating. He had eyes red as far as he said, it's hot in there. He said, it's hot in more ways than one. Y'all don't want to know about it. But uh, I, I think we knew that we had everything on our side. I mean, it, it, it wasn't any way she could stop us from graduating. And I don't know, never found out what she was talking about. But anyhow, out of that, the faculty had a committee to go through the records. I knew that I took a full load all the time. I knew that you, you didn't, you know, except for that one period when we'd go down to the gym every, but, uh, and I knew that I had participated in all the activities and, you know, done an outstanding job, I thought. <clears throat> oh, well. The faculty committee came back with the truth. They said that I was a valedictorian, Julia was a salutatorian. And oh, whoa, whoa. You know, Miss Cameron didn't like that. So, she, like I said, she taught literature and uh, senior English. And then let, she'd come in and she'd ask a question. Well, if somebody didn't know it, she'd ask somebody else. And then he'd come around and we'll actually validate him, see what he has to say. 
So, at first, I started, I would answer the question. And then it got to be a game for us. Was it going to go all the way around and come to me? And I wasn't going to know either. So for a while, we, she was doing all the talking in the class, you know? And uh, then good old Mr. Walker, love him to death. Uh, he called everybody baby. And so one day he said, baby, wait a minute. Uh, 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 what class is over? Talk, talk to you. Say, uh, I want you to come back by here this evening after school and talk to you. All right. So uh, I went by that afternoon. Ms. Walker said, baby, uh, it, it, I want you to go to Hampton next year. I said, Mr. Walker, I can't go to Hampton next year. Matter of fact, I can't go to any college. I said, because my parents don't have the money to send me. He said, that I, I said, I want you to go to Hampton next year. Uh, you, 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 you're going, aren't you? Yes, Mr. Walker. <laughs> he said, so I'm going. And uh, so we... He said, I said, I, like I told you before, Ms. Walker, my parents just don't have the money. <clears throat> At the time, my father was working for the town. And like I said, my mother was a housewife, and she worked sometimes at, uh, over there helping at the restaurant. And helping my, uh, she run the restaurant for my aunt. That, uh, she, that we sold devil crabs, hard crabs downtown. And uh, I said, but we don't have, I worked at the service station the whole time through high school. So uh, he said, come on, when I got there, come on, let's go. So, uh, he said, we went up to the office. I got ahead of myself. Because he came to West Point to see me talk to my mother uh, the first day, and uh, she told him the same thing. She said, "I love him, go." She said, "But you know, I, we just don't have anything to." She said, all, "All you have to do, you said that he can go, and that's all." So that Monday came back, and. He went up after school, he told me to come meet him in the office. And I went in the office with him. He walked in and told Mr. Thurston principal, he said, uh, he, he get Carlos on the phone. Just like little boy, Mr. Thurston, <laughs> didn't dial that no more. And he dialed Carlos Davis, who was a registrar at Hampton University, at Hampton Institute at that time. And, uh, yeah, it, Person gave it to him and uh, hey, Carlos, this is Johnny. Say, so got a baby, won't send down that to you next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he don't have any money. At that time, it cost 905 tuition and board at Hampton University, Hampton Institute. So, he said, uh, I, I don't know. He said, how much money do you need, baby? I, I need it all. Oh, you know, I'm thinking I don't, you know, I don't have any. And I'm thinking that he's supposed to know a little more about what was going on than I knew. So, uh, but in my mind, I'm going to, I'm working at the service station. And I decide that I can make I, I started figuring out what I could make, but they didn't think that I had worked there all the way through high school and hadn't been able to save anything because I bought you know my clothes or whatever I needed for school or whatever. And uh, 
Well, I'm thinking, I don't know what I told them. Well, I could make, I saved two hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, whatever it was. But uh, I guess College Davis knew that. So <laughs> I didn't know what I was talking about. I just walk, walk, say, well, he needs X number of dollars, and uh, he said, oh, said. Uh, you're going to uh, give him a job. He said, I got a job for you, baby. I said, yes, sir, thank you. And uh, he said, uh, now anything else, baby, you need? Are you sure now? I said, well, I knew nothing about all those lab fees and everything that was going to come down the tube. And, uh, but Mr. Walker told me, he said, baby, you know, you go down there, and you things are not uh, you can't handle it. Let me know. Just call me and let me know. So I said okay. So I went down there. My uh, first semester, I had decent grades. They weren't as good as they were in high school, but I wasn't flunking anything. I didn't have any D's. So. I was, wasn't quite pleased because the one thing that I did not learn in high school, I hadn't needed to, was how to study, see? And uh, I, I knew how to get it done and I figured out my shortcuts. I hadn't, well, by the time I left high school, I hadn't read a book. and. Most literature, I didn't read. I didn't know, know who Macbeth was until I got listening to the guys <laughs> when I got to college. But uh, anyhow, that, that I, my, my shortcomings there, I got down there, and what happens is. Hampton sends you a letter about once a month or sometime every every two weeks telling you that you owe X number of dollars on tuition and if it's not paid by a certain date that you're going to be uh, uh, put out of school. And that, that really started getting to me. But luckily, uh, they had the National Defense Student Loans. That's why I know Bernie, what Bernie Sanders was saying, that they could have, they could do it, we could do it as a country, but I'd not do it necessarily free. Because the National Defense Student Loan, you could get the loan, uh, government back, but it was to get people to go into service. Uh, you can, any, any service that you went into, you know, teacher, doctor, lawyer, whatever you wanted to be, I'm going to serve in the community or go into the military. And you could take off for each semester that you went, it took off X number of dollars. So that's the way you paid uh, the loan back. Um, so, I got what I could from them, and uh, that's what helped me to get back into school the second year with the National Defense Student Loan. And, uh, but Hampton is still, by now, it's, it's messing with my mind. I couldn't study, my grades went down. Uh, matter of fact, or on my, my freshman year, we used to play pickup games, basketball in a uh, small gym down there. Um, and then this guy came over to me and introduced himself, and he said, I'm a basketball coach here at uh, Hampton. And I said, I talked to your coach today, uh, yesterday, rather. I said, oh, you did? He said, I've been watching you. I didn't pay any attention to who was sitting in the stands because there used to be guys just waiting, you know, for their turn to play. And uh, 
He said, why you didn't come out for the team? I said, uh, well, I, had, I was not recruited, and I'm here because one of my teachers made me, told me I, need, I was coming, and here I am. So he said, well, uh, I'd like for you to come out for the team. I said, okay. He said, now you know that they've been uh, doing conditioning for about a month or so. He said, but you gotta come out this Saturday. He said, because we have our first cut. And I said, what's your first cut? He said, uh, first cut is a 10 mile run. I, I said, he said, oh, you can make it. He said, you can make it. I, I said, but I haven't been, you know, I haven't been uh, trained. He said, you can make it. He said, you, you make that 10 miles one way or the other and smile and, and went on. So I went down and I tried and I made, I made the 10 mile run. I walked. And I ran, I walked, ran, and, you know, I, at first I ran as much as I could, then I'd walk and run, walk and run. He said, and the only, he is the out there, the head uh, managers out there recording it. So all you gotta do is make it around, come on, you can do it. And so I made it, and uh, consequently I paid, uh, what's the basketball team from, up until I went home for Christmas. And um, my m mother uh, told me, well, I said, Mom, I'm going over to Middlesex. I was going, uh, going straight to see Mr. Walker as soon as I got home. And uh, she said, wait a minute, just sit down, because she was cooking. Frying chicken, I'd never get that. She said, sit down. She said, I didn't want to call you because I knew you were having exams and uh, didn't want, uh, so I said, uh, what? She said, but you buried Mr. John Henry St. Clair Walker last Thursday. Well, I guess you know that just blew the wind out of my sails because I knew that I was going to be able to get uh, the help that I needed and make things go all right. And uh, so I was totally lost. I went back to Hampton. Uh, couldn't ever see college. He was every time I went up there, he was out speaking or lecturing or something somewhere. And uh, they got to the point where the second year, it looked like they were sending more letters <laughs> than this in I was going over to see the uh, school psychologist because I was just in that bad shape. I couldn't study, I couldn't do anything. Uh, it, I told my, uh, the coach, that, you know, I was going to stop playing basketball. He won't know what's so behind in my subject. What subject's behind? He said, I, 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 we keep checking on you. On, uh, but what? I said, I'm having uh, such a hard time. I just can't. And I had nobody to encourage me. That was the first in my family to go to college. And uh, so I stopped playing basketball. Uh, but I came back, I saw the guys again. Next time I saw most of them were down at, uh, I was at Fort Bragg because I went into uh, Special Forces. And it, what that 10 mile run did for me it made me believe that I could do just about anything because I had always tried to excel most things I did, but I didn't figure you could put anything up 
performing that I couldn't do. And uh, that, helped, that helped me out. Uh, so, I, and I told you Ms. Cameron said we weren't going to graduate, right? And I hate to say it, but uh, vindictive woman. <laughs> She found out I was going. Mr. Walker had uh, me going to him. Now her thing is to come in. Uh, well, she started asking her questions, and we wouldn't answer. Well, no one need. Uh, no, you, you, you won't be doing that down in Jesse Lemon Brown. You get Jesse Lemon Brown. She's going to. Well, Jesse Lemon Brown was. She was that teacher that nobody wanted. <laughs> Uh, she taught English. Uh, you know, indeed, no, indeed, you want to, you want to do it down there. So, uh, but when I got my schedule, I guess you know I had just to let them around because <laughs> everybody that knew somebody to tell them that when they went to make the schedule out, they knew not to get uh, in her class. But uh, I got to see from Jesse Lemon Brown. I, I wouldn't even go back and tell Miss Cameron that I got to see, you know, and, and because it it was just not right what she did and was trying to do. I, I I don't know why she would try to do that, but all in all, we had it was good times at St. Clair Walk. I took a uh, long vocation like a coach. You know, we decided they decided uh, uh, that at that time that uh, they're going to try and have some bachelor homemaking. So for, I think, nine weeks, the girls went to agriculture and the guys went to homemaking. And, and then to make biscuits and some things. And uh, it was beneficial. So, but that, uh, we didn't have a two sports there. That was uh, baseball and basketball. It, uh, but baseball wasn't, I didn't, didn't like it. My daddy used to pitch, I tried to pitch. I pitched sidearm, uh, but not overhand. And I just didn't like it enough to, to play. But, uh, When I wrote my speech for graduation, I'll never forget the subject. Ms. Cameron gave me the subject. It was recollection and uh, recollections and strength in the future. Well, to me, that sounded like you'd be looking at what had happened during the time that you were there and, you know, what you expect to do. Or, what the class should be trying to do when they get out of the world. So I sat down and wrote what I thought was a nice speech. She turned it down. Okay. Well, I got some, I started off with John Scott. He was my principal at West Point. I had him to look over. He couldn't find, you know, when I wrote Next one, he couldn't find anything wrong with it. It was good. Carried it to him. What did you say in your speech? I don't know. <laughs> I said what I, like I said, I said what I thought. I, I looked at uh, what had happened while we were in school, you know, and uh, and I talked, uh, uh, you know, what we should try to do in the violent world. And that's what I thought I was doing. So Lucy comes from a real strong academic family. Her, uh, her brother, Virginia Thornton, he, was, he died at Dr. Thornton, but a uh, great speaker. And I went down and I got Lucy first to help me. She looked over the speech that I had. Boom. 
know what she wouldn't take it. And no, 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 not that on it. Send me back. I'm not telling her that she's looking at what someone else has done to help me do, you know. So it got to where it was about a week before graduation. And because uh, I had a speech written for me, okay, by Virginia Thornton. And he was speaking all over the nation. I know you knew how to, she was right to speak. She wouldn't accept it. So I sat down and I just wrote something and something and something. And that's what I got up. And that's what I said, and I couldn't tell you today, or even a week later, what was in it. Because by then, I didn't care. You know, she was being vindictive, and I was with it. But uh, by my second year in school, I was failing the majority of my class just about. and. Uh, so they put me on academic probation. And I had already made up my mind that I was going to go into the military and use the GI Bill to go to school. I still was going to graduate, but I was going to take that route. And uh, Gordon Jones was a teacher there on that. Uh, he taught architecture at Hampton and lived in King and Queen County. He came over and said, uh, I heard you don't plan to come back next year. I said, I can't come back next year. I said, because I'm on academic probation. I said, I'll stay at least a semester. And he said, I don't know. Why don't you come on, go back with me on, I'm going back next Tuesday or whatever. I said, I'm telling you. He said, don't, don't worry about that. We can handle that. I said, well, I've already volunteered going to the Army, and uh, I said, I'm supposed to be going to Richmond Monday. He said, we can, we can get a deferment. He said, no. And I just, I couldn't put myself through that. And uh, after Mr. Walker passed on me, that was that. Was it. So uh, I went into the Army, went to Vietnam, uh, I was on a Special Forces A-Team demolition specialist. Uh, I excelled there. Uh, a lot of what I had learned in high school helped me out there. Uh, but primarily what we did was actually learn to teach because that's what you do uh, in special forces, you go in and take the, get the indigenous people, and that's your fighting force. You train them. But so I had one. I uh, had one uh, mission there, and uh, I had volunteered to go back. Uh, we were doing six months in the country and come back to our rock, our Okinawa for stay like one or two and then go back because they were they made it a TDY assignment instead of uh, because nobody was supposed to be in the country at that time. So uh, my then wife wrote me a letter so strong about her leaving and blah, blah, blah. So I just, because I had to take an extension of eight months in order to go back to Vietnam because I was due to come back to the States. So uh, I just gave a couple pages to the Sergeant Major and said, I think this about explains it. And you know, he looked at it, he said, okay, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. So I ended up coming back to the States. I uh, left there, went to Norfolk State, uh, and my plans were to make a military career. 
But uh, I had been selected to go into the advanced program at Hampton, NROTC. And when I went into the department at Norfolk and I should speak to the colonel, there's a staff sergeant on the desk. I want to know why I want to speak to the colonel. I told him, you know, uh, tell me that I was too old and blah, blah, blah. He didn't know anything about me, you know. And uh, I was <laughs> fresh out of the jungle of Vietnam, and I wasn't taking a lot of foolishness from somebody, you know. So I, just, I told him, you know, it was his kind of ignorance that caused me to get out of the Army and uh, to decide to go back to school and then go back into the Army with my plan. And uh, I said, but, and I, after I told him off, I walked out and I never went back. So that's why I ended up teaching for 37 years. Uh, but uh, like I said, I, I got all I needed from St. Clair Walker. My wife came from Middlesex County. I married Julia Wake. She, she's in my class. And uh, of course, I probably should have gone to Vietnam because she ended up leaving eventually anyhow. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I had uh, two daughters. Uh, it, uh, one of my daughters uh, graduated from Hampton with honors. And she went out to Texas and was there for about a year. And she started showing signs of withdrawal or whatever. She didn't come to find she was diagnosed as a schizophrenic. I didn't know that it was in my wife's family. I hadn't been told. And when we went down to see her, she about Jan talked to the doctors. Actually, if either one of us had anybody in mental institution. I said, yes. I have an uncle that died there. So we were thinking of that, you know. But I didn't think the reason he was there was because of baseball he hit him in the head. And that's why he was out of his mind, but it was it was schizophrenia. So that's where my Heart is these days is with my daughter. She's now 53, and I don't even know where she is. She, her, her cousins over here went up to Merle and brought her back down, and she started Deltaville and worked on around the way down to Gloucester. And from Gloucester, we don't know where she went. So, but well, those are the days at St. Clair Walker that I I remember. They, they were mostly good times, but I just didn't understand. And until this day, I don't know, because just about everybody is dead that would know or would have told me. And I tried to get Dr. Lomax uh, to tell me, but the, he... <laughs> He claimed he, he doesn't remember. He, no, no, we would have had a faculty committee to do that, blah, blah, blah. I said, now, come on now. You mind getting you know, worse than mine? Mm -hmm. But he, I, I, he just, I guess, professionalism didn't want to say so. You were a teacher for, you said, 37 years? Mm -hmm. How did your teachers at St. Clair Walker uh, influence how you taught? as an educator? Ah, uh, some, because I learned, and probably more so in a vocational education is what I went into, because I love to work with my hands. I love to build, and like I said, we learned some of everything in that little white building that's still up there. Uh, how to well, how to use all the basic uh, woodworking machines and whatever. Uh, in between the vocational agriculture and the military's techniques, 
I learned to teach. Uh, we had methods of instruction in special forces. Uh, what the Army teaches you, or the military, I should say, teaches you what you need to do to get the job done. Not a lot of fluff of who did what and who discovered what way back when. That doesn't matter. So that's the way we were taught to teach in vocational education also. Is you just teach those objectives. I don't teach you how to make that phone. I don't need to. Not, the, what, why the table is dead and all of that. But just going straight to the point. And uh, even when they got to where they were doing what they call uh, new methodology of teaching, uh, what is it, DET, PET, uh, those classes, they're just teaching to an objective. And, uh, but that's what we taught. Uh, when I, I taught furniture making a lot, woodworking was my love. And I had it so that I, you had to pass safety tests on all the machines in order to, but I still had to supervise, you had to get permission. But if you couldn't pass the written test, you could go there and pass the practical test. So I fixed it so that everybody that I had should be able to make a decent grade uh, if they were willing to do the work. And uh, I, yeah, some uh, students would come down and come to either me or and my buddy Sam Hurts just to hang out. We got all our tests. They would type, type them up, or whatever. But it started. It was like a a little family down there. They, they'd come and hang out in Sam's office, but nobody. It's only going to be one in my office, and that's the one that's working for me. Uh, but uh, he, he took a lot of time, and then it started. He'd come over and talk to me. He said, "Man, we got to do something. We got this child who's having having problems. The kids had so much baggage, and uh, they got to where they would confide in us, and uh, we'd get them help either through guidance, guidance counselor, and by Jimmy being." Right there at Fort Eustis, the closest school to Fort Eustis, uh, there are a lot of military kids there. And I don't know how much you know about the military, but it, it, the family is part of <laughs> the military. Because if your child isn't acting right and the current company commander don't want to have to call you in there and about so many times, you know about it, so it kind of make them walk short. But if the child was being abused, they were, you know, we helped them out however we could. And it, I guess that's the way uh, Lattimore uh, taught us, uh, Lomax and everything that he said, everything that he taught in his classes were relevant to the task at hand and not a lot of fluff. So, uh, like I said, I had good teachers and it, the, the military just reinforced it. And by the time I, I got back in, to college after coming out of the military, basically I knew how to teach because that's what we did. We had uh, we worked with the Mountain Yard uh, in the Central Highlands and uh, that we trained them to be our fighting force. But uh, Ms. Holmes is my first love. She took care of. She is she's always a no nonsense person. And you know when she got real serious, you know she had that look in her eyes, and you know just. Straighten up and fly right here because my songs didn't play.
She even had a buddy, Leo. Uh, he was, she had, we, we were all born poor in dirt. Didn't have sense enough to know it. Just had a whole lot of love. But uh, Leo came over and lived with her. She had two sons. He became the same, the third son. Uh, and his, I think junior and senior year, he lived over with them. Because remember, I told you, MGM Federation basketball tournament. We were coming from Westport, going to Gloucester. And the guys, uh, his homes lived right up the road there. They thought we were going to pick Leo. <laughs> and we thought Leo was going to be riding on, you know, uh, Madison and Lattimore. And we got to Matthews and no Leon. That's our point, main point guard. And uh, so we sent Mr. Madison back to get him. But he was, like I said, he was living with Miss, Miss Holmes then. And uh, they picked him up, and of course we won the tournament. But uh, yeah, but it they they were real compassionate. We had uh, one uh, had let's see, Miss Frazier was my first science teacher there. She turned, we had uh, general science from her, but I had. Uh, uh, Biology and uh, chemistry from uh, Lomax. Mrs. Thurston uh, taught uh, was ninth, ninth and tenth grade English, I guess. Mrs. Cameron was uh, senior English. So, uh, but. I guess that's about it. I'll think of some more when I get out of here, but. <laughs> well, thank you so much for uh -huh. your time, sir. This was really wonderful. Okay. Yes.